my gosh, people. The game feature. It's gonna kick your ass. Pitch roll, yaw, vertical. If that isn't too much for you, I bet it's not too much for you. Today it's time to earn your stripes and I'll show you how to understand the game stuff. This episode is not brought to you by Maya Mate, the drink that nerdy DJI pilots trust in. Almost empty after so many times filming the same scene. Uh, actually, yeah, talking of South Africa, no, not South Africa, South America, that brings me to the rainforest, and the rainforest brings me to the rain outdoors. And if you now take a look outside the window, you see uh, why I am not outdoors filming the episode there. Actually, I'm kind of lucky about that because um, I don't have to grab my super heavy bag and my super heavy camera person even. Please excuse me and don't, don't stop filming now. Um, yeah, I don't have to do it out there. And now we can be super relaxed right in the office and I will tell you how things work. Shortly, I received a message via my Facebook group and uh, I get asked, Tom, how do I change the uh, gain values within the assistance software? And um, actually the main problem I think isn't really the changing part. It's that most people don't really know yet what the gain is all about, what these weird words as they are, um, what are they? Roll, pitch, yaw, and vertical, what they mean. And uh, now let's just find out what those mean and after that I'll show you uh, when to change those and how to finally change those. And now for the explanation part, let me grab a DJI Phantom. And uh, we should always remember that our Phantom is moving within the three-dimensional space. And so this means that there are three axes that our copter operates on. And now we gotta know what they do and how they affect the copter. The first one is named the pitch axis. It runs from the left side to the right side of the copter in a straight line, crossing the center of the copter. If we now take the right stick of our remote control and push that to the front or to the back, the copter is simply going to lean to the front or to the back. And this is actually the impact of moving the right stick to the front or to the back. And uh, this is how the pitch axis movement looks like. The next axis is the roll axis. And actually now there is a line from the front of the copter till the back of the copter. Again crossing uh, right through the center of our phantom. And now if we push the right stick of our remote control to the right or left, our copter is going to do a right or left curve in air. This is the roll movement. And now, last but not least, there is a third axis, and that is named the yaw axis. And this one runs right through our copter, from the bottom down here, through the center, till the top of the copter. And this is uh, the axis for the rotation. So if you rotate your copter, for whatever reason, for filming or for simply flying it around, you always rotate around the yaw axis. And this is already the third and last axis. But there is another value that DJI added into uh, the gain function and that is named vertical. So we now gotta uh, imagine a straight line next to our copter and um, it's all about the up or down movement of the copter. So if you're bringing your copter up high in the sky or if you're pushing it back down to the ground or if you're letting it hover over here. And uh, this is actually what, what the vertical is all about. And uh, this has nothing to do with axes actually anymore. It's simply another value that is kind of important because uh, yeah, it's, it's one of the main movements of our copter as well, right? And now after all the talking, let's just get right into the assistance software and let me show you guys how to set things and uh, how to change things and actually uh, when to uh, change things because this is kind of important as well. We don't have to play around with the settings usually. Now let me just show you how to enter the game menu. First of you start the assistant software and uh, skip this thing at the beginning. Next you, ah, now it wants to do an upgrade. We don't want to do any upgrades. So you now click at basic, gain, 
and this is where you end up and you don't have to be confused or scared by all the complicated looking values, words, numbers and stuff. I'll try to break things down for you, make him understandable. For everyone out there, as we say in Germany, stand on top of the beer can people. So we see that all the different options are split into two categories, the basics gain and the attitude gain. So now what is the difference? The basic gain controls the reaction rate of the copter regarded to the movement that is caused by, I don't know, wind, weather, gravity, air pressure, any movement that has nothing to do with uh, the actual comments that you send with your remote control. So for example, if we mess around with the basics values, we tell the copter how strongly or weakly to react to these changes. The attitude gain values control the reaction rate of how the copter reacts to any control comments from your remote control. The attitude gain values control how precise and aggressive on the one hand side or how lazy and sluggish on the other hand side the copter reacts to any control comments coming in from your remote control. Now how to change and set the values. First off, usually you won't have to change them at all. The default values work out pretty well and uh, you only change them if needed and don't go too crazy and push them to the limit. Go step by step, I don't know, maybe 10% maximum at a time uh, because the flight behavior changes and uh, you might cause damage if you simply, I don't know, uh, push them to the limit. We don't want to do that. So step by step and take things easy. And when to change the values actually, that is easy to understand as well. Uh, for example, if you're using new gear, new props, if you added or removed some weight of the copter or if the copter simply reacts too sluggish and lazy and unprecise on the one hand side or if it reacts too aggressive, too fast and too sharp on the other hand side. So if the copter shakes, overacts and is very fast in air and always tries to stay at the, cur uh, at the current height and stuff like that, that means that the values might be set too high. And if the copter slides around and reacts only after a while and relaxes and it almost has, has a drink in air, the copter's values might probably be set too low. And of course before changing you need to look at the copter and see what axis you actually gotta change. So if you gotta change the, the pitch, roll, yaw or vertical, even though we remember that vertical isn't actually an axis. And that brings in the actual rule, the higher the value, the faster and more aggressive the copter's reaction. And the lower the value, the more sluggish and slow the copter's reaction. So this is actually all you need to know about this. And as I told you before, um, don't change the things too crazy. Go step by step only. And thanks for watching and there are even more tutorials of mine online that you definitely should take a look at. And if your copter still slides around, you might think of an IMU calibration of your copter uh, because sometimes that is an issue as well. If the copter slides a little to the side, it's not always about the gain only. So check out that video of mine. Thanks for watching and don't forget to check out tomstechtime.com and maybe you can join my group on Facebook, which is uh, facebook.com slash group slash Tom's Tech Time. Thanks for watching. This was Tom over and out and leave a thumb up, subscribe and share and like and rate and be crazy and leave a freaking comment. And thanks again for watching. Bye bye. Okay.